types of school history. This is a um, um, lecture <coughs> for one school for all module at University College Estoril by Andrew Thomas. And I want you to watch this before Monday the 4th of September and I'm very sorry I'm late. So we're going to look at the different kinds of um, school history in this video because on Monday we'll be studying um, Norwegian school history in its entirety but I want to look at the different ways you can you can tell the story in terms of ideas, institutions and operations because the simple fact is the, the way you tell um, school history reflects what you think is important about it and of course different things are important and they're, gonna, um, they're going to influence each other so it's important that we know how they're important as well. Um, so first up, um, I said we should look at some ideas, and um, and when I talk about ideas, I'm, I'm talking about pedagogical hist um, history, the history of how we uh, of what we think learning is, um, how we become wise, how we become knowledgeable, because how we um, how we teach reflects what we think um, uh, what we think learning is, and and why we teach, and and what we think the reason we want to teach it. For example, in antiquity, teaching was all about teaching political leaders, and both Aristotle and Plato were interested in teaching people so that they could rule, um, which involved a certain amount of rhetoric, but also involved thinking clearly and thinking justly and wisely. Whereas, um, and, and that worked throughout antiquity. Um, whereas, when the um, the Christian, when philosophy became Christian, essentially in, in late antiquity and the early Middle Ages, um, learning became a lot to do with um, reading books and, um, and and reading off a script, but also um, learning to pray um, and, and thinking through and watching watching how your brain works and what um, and where your brain takes you in different ways. So, and so this kind of book and brain um, activity. Uh, went very much hand in hand throughout the early Middle Ages until the um, late Middle Ages and the university systems, um, which, 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 which basically developed them until um, and then jumping over various um, and various ideas about what and why we why we teach um, the idea um, the model of um, what what it is what kind of people we teach now is very oriented towards um, the idea of the brain of the of the learning brain. Um, and and uh, and teaching as a way of um, altering circuitry, um, and with various ramifications throughout the the system. And that is essentially the the metaphor which is lying behind a lot of Piaget's thinking. Um, but it's all, but it's also um, what drives empirical um, pedagogy and pedagogy in, in a great deal. Today is the is the working computer um, as a as a as a thinking um, thinking thing, and that is what pedagogy is all about. So that's so that's the kind of pedagog that, that's the history of pedagogical ideas, whereas institutions work in quite different ways. Um, it's not necessarily an idea of of what knowledge is and what thinking is. It's an idea of um, of uh, uh, the history of where we where we learn. Um, some of the first um, philosophy schools were, were just in gardens or in the forum. In fact, Aristotle's um, group, um, philosophical society, um, were called the Peripatetics. People that just walk around while they teach. Um, while they learn, um, eventually this became um, in turn basically philosophical clubs. People that were writing to each other and talking together and meeting occasionally, but not so often, um, but um, connected throughout the Mediterranean. So, um, so that was an institution. Eventually, we had the university institution, but that only came via the monastery, um, which very much took over from the philosophy clubs in late antiquity. Um, and, and, and monasteries, of course, make a completely different f um, context for learning. They're all about books. Um, they're all about prayer. Um, but they're also all about. Um, they also select certain kinds of people. It's not just um, the citizen, but it's the really religious citizen that is um, that goes into a monastery. Um, it can take people from very different classes, uh, essentially, because this is a period in which slavery um, disappears from from early European history. Um, and it's taken up again, of course, later. But um, um, but um, but the clarif but the small elite group of um, of learners here is not taken necessarily from an economic class, but from a religious class. People who are basically interested in giving their lives for God and abandoning all other um, ways of doing things. Now that's completely different from the university institution, where it is a, a knowledge-based institution. But um, but that has its own little exclusive things. Here it is a lot more class decided. It's also gender decided. You got female and male, uh, male monasteries, but you don't have women going to university in the early, early, early Middle Ages. Now, all these different ideals will feed into um, what we see here in the background, which is my old school, um, 
where where essentially the uh, the ambition is to include everybody but it's going to include people in different ways and um and from different from different classes and in different um, they will then f be fed into different institutions so you've got private schools and public schools and so on and so forth so the institutional context has a great deal um uh, of developments and will 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 determine how schools actually um happen what also influences is the operations, which is to say decisions as to how schools will work. Um, and, um, and we can observe these, for example, when schools were paid for, started to be paid for by the state or how they relate to other institutions like the church. Um, and you can these are operations which take place and we can see we can observe how schools were working before and after those operations we also have decisions about what kind of subjects are um are to be introduced into schools uh, and again the the um, controversial one is religion but also um you've got geography and history which have enormous influence on early schooling um but which don't necessarily work um quite so um don't have so such quite status in the university spheres other other um subjects come into being and then i discuss so for example there's a discussion at the moment as to whether mental health should be a subject in school essentially these are decisions that are made about school sometimes within school but most most often in governments in parliaments and maybe even in courts um so all three operations of um, of um of politics will will be involved here so these are three different stories, ideas, institutions, and operations. But of course, in obvious ways um, and in less obvious ways, they will influence each other. The obvious ones we've already talked about. Um, so for example, in antiquity, the ideas of, your, uh, of what learning is um, will, will um, relate to what, you, what kind of institutions you have and who you want to, to train and for what. Um, but also in less obvious ways. So, for example, enormous schools and universal schooling systems make it much easier to develop um, in institution-based research and empirical research so that the modern empirical pedagogical research, um, which can compare things across countries and across, across institutions because we're doing something like the same thing, um, it's based in the same institutions. We could um, say that modern schooling, enormous population-sized um, schooling, um, has revolutionised um, pedagogical science in the same way that uh, massive hospitals and welfare states have revolutionised med um, um, modern medicine in ways that you can test medicines across um, massive groups of people with double-blind um, empirical studies in ways that um have revolutionized the way we do um the way we heal people um we've got really similar um par parallels in um in pedagogy and that's a less obvious consequence so my point is that all of these three are, um, are important um but they're going to be um given different institution in different um, emphasis by different kinds of histories and that's going to be interesting we're going um so on on monday we will be um, studying some of that and we'll be especially looking at um, Norwegian history in particular of course um, Nordic history the history of um, Nordic schooling but looking at the ideas institutions and operations that happen outside the school um, which may have influenced that for example the institution of the prison or the institution of psychology or hospitals um, and the and the subject uh, the academic subject of psychology and so we'll be talking about neighboring ideas institutions and operations so come on Monday and, and I look forward to um, discussing these things with you.